Hey, what's up everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about how to overcome your fear of rejection, call reluctance, and get your power back. How to flip the script so that instead of being feeling fearful or feeling that reluctance to take action, you're drawn into power. You're drawn into meaningful motivation that animates you with a spirit of power, love, a sound mind, and a desire to serve. That's what we're going to talk about today because I've been seeing and hearing a lot of mortgage professionals lately telling me this common story that they're working in their business, not much on their business. They're getting caught up in the minutia. They're not reaching out to clients. They're not reaching out to referral partners. They're kind of just doing the daily duty and the daily minutia, and they're not being proactive when it comes to picking up the phone and actually making it rain and doing it where it's a get to versus a have to. It's more of like, you know, the office ball and chain around their ankle. And it feels like a have to it feels like the phone is 10,000 pounds and they just don't want to make those calls. That's why they do what's more comfortable in the moment which is putting out fires when it comes to deals in the pipeline or pushing paper or doing administration or dealing with stuff that is reactionary, like responding to emails or calling people back or taking any phone call that might come their way. And so they're in reaction mode all day. And that's a hiding place from the most potently profitable activity they can ever do if they're doing it the smart way, the right way, the right way that we teach and we help our clients implement in their business. And that is reaching out to clients, getting that repeat and referral business when that overture is done properly, effectively, as well as attracting top producing realtors and having them make you their exclusive. There is no more profitable activity than those two things, reaching out to clients, getting that repeat and referral business, and getting top producing agents to make you their exclusive. And yet knowing to be true, because let's be real, we all know that to be true, doesn't change our life. It's when we take that knowing and we align ourselves with a daily practice and with beliefs that allow us to enact that daily practice with consistency. So we're gonna talk today about what exactly this call reluctance, this fear of rejection is and how you can obliterate it, how you can blast through it and you can step into your power once and for all. Because let's be real, call reluctance is a symptom. It's not a thing that just happens by accident. It's based on a cause and effect stimuli. It's a symptom of a deeper problem. And if you just try and put a Band-Aid on the symptom by getting new whiz-bang marketing or new whiz-bang automation or new whiz-bang fancy funnels or whatever you want to put in there as a Band-Aid and you don't get to the root problem of call reluctance and fear of rejection, you're going to continue to be your own bottleneck. You're going to continue to get in your own way and you're going to block yourself from the greatness you know you're called to. So call reluctance is a symptom of a deeper problem. And that deeper problem is that you are fearing and living in fear versus faith. You are focusing on lack versus abundance. You're focusing on lack versus giving, serving, loving, contributing, making a difference in someone else's life. You're focusing on the lack in yourself, inadequacy, and I've been there. What if I say the wrong thing? What if I trip on my lips? What if I look like a fool? What if the person hangs up on me? What if, what if, what if? And what happens is we look at all the what ifs in terms of the negative, not the positive, right? We're not focusing on the what if I land the perfect partner? What if I get a referral from my client? What if this person ends up sending me 12 to 24 deals a year for the next five to 10 years. We never think about that, do we? What we think about is, what if it doesn't go our way? What if I look like a fool? What if I, you know, people think that I don't have what it takes and then they have a conversation with me and they remove all doubt and then they really know that I am a fraud and that I don't have what it takes to really deliver. And so we have all these demons inside of us that start to feed the fire of our inadequacy, 
our lack, limitation, and scarcity. It reminds me of a story of this young warrior in this Aboriginal village. And he had a dream one night that there was two wolves that were fighting ferociously against each other. There was a black wolf and a white wolf. And they were fighting what seemed to be into the death, blood, gore, teeth, fangs, all that. And he woke up in a cold sweat in the middle of this dream suddenly. And the dream hadn't culminated to an ending and he was just left hanging. Who wins? Was it the white wolf or the black wolf? And he was very disturbed. So the next day he went to the old sage in the village and asked him, young, he said, the young man said to the sage, I had this crazy dream about these two wolves, a black wolf and a white wolf. And it was scary. They were fighting to the death. And all of a sudden I woke up and I want to know what does this dream mean? And who wins the fight? Was it the white wolf or the black wolf? And the old sage says, young man, the white wolf and the black wolf are your inner selves, your winner self and your wimp self. Your wimp self is the black wolf. Your winner self is the white wolf. Well, who wins? The one that you feed, young man. If you feed your fears, the black wolf will win. If you feed your faith and your strength and your power, the white wolf will win. And so there's a lot of truth to the old sages recommendation and exhortation that whatever part of you you feed, whatever part of you you focus on expands. If you focus on your fear, your lack, limitation, scarcity, you get more of that, don't you? If you focus on your champion self, your winner self, your dream, all your capacities and capabilities, what you have to bring to the world, the value you have to bring to the world, you get more of that also, don't you? Where your attention goes, your energies flow and your results show. So what you focus on really makes you or breaks you. And fear of rejection is focusing on lack, limitation, scarcity, not enoughness, inadequacy, and yourself as opposed to someone else that you're called to serve. It's one form of narcissism because we navel gaze and we look at ourselves and we get so hung up on ourselves. What if they think a certain way? What if they reject me? What if they say no? What if, what if, what if? And it's all tied to you, isn't it? It's all tied to me. It's all tied to linking all this consequence to your own ego and your own pride. And what if I fail? And it really is feeding that fire that has us feel not enough. And that's really our biggest fear for many of us is what if I'm not enough? What if people find out I'm a fraud? What if people find out that I can't do this? And at the end of the day, it comes down to that old sales saying that the first sale you need to make is selling you on you. Because if you don't sell yourself on you, who will? If you don't believe in yourself, who will? If you're not a stand for your greatness, who will? If not you, who? If not now, when? So that's what fear of rejection is, is focusing on lack, limitation, and scarcity. What about on the flip side? What's the opposite end of the spectrum to that? How do you get your power back? You get your power back by focusing on love, service, contribution, making a difference, focusing on abundance, taking the gifts and talents you've given, you've been given by your creator and using those to serve others, to serve your, your fellow man, to make a difference in someone's life, to liberate someone from their pain, from their problem, into their dream, into their solution. So you get your power back by realizing that you're here not to just collect and accumulate and get what you want, when you want it, how you want it. That's entitlement syndrome. We see that in our young people nowadays, right? They want it and they want it now. They want the flavor they want, how they want, when they want, 
in the bowl they want with the spoon they want. They want it all and they want it now and they have entitlement syndrome. And if you've ever seen a little hellion, that's what it looks like. Someone who wants it, wants it now and wants it their way. This ain't freaking Burger King. Life ain't gonna just give it your way because you have a pulse you can fog a mirror. You actually have to earn your expansion by giving. Earn your success by serving. The greatest of among us, as Jesus said, is the greatest servant among us. So we have to get off ourselves and focus on giving, serving, loving, contributing. That's how we get our power back. We get heart connected to the difference we can make in someone else's life. So instead of me feeling sorry for myself that someone's going to reject me, I get heart connected to having and building a dream team of rock star, top producing agents who I love and who love me. Working in a spirit of collaboration and synergy and harmony, animated with the same spirit of unified desire to excellence, to bringing excellence to the marketplace, to serving our clients with excellence, to expanding and growing and becoming the best version of ourselves and having a ton of fun doing it. So in my mind's eye, I get heart connected to the purpose to serve, not because I have to, but because I get to, because it's a privilege and a, and a pleasure to serve my fellow man in a meaningful way. And I get to pick and choose who I want to work with. And I'm going to bring massive value to those select people that I handpick to serve in that way. Notice how that's all about loving and serving the other. It's not about ourselves, but here's the cool part. When you do that and you do that from a place of service and contribution and purpose and mission, what happens is the more you water someone else, the more you're watered. The more you bless someone else, the more you're blessed. The more you lift someone else up, the more you're lifted up. The more you help someone else step into higher and higher levels of prosperity you naturally elevate your own prosperity at the same time. As good old Ziggy Ziegler once said, you can have anything you want in your life if you'll just help enough other people get what they want in their life. So that's how we get our power back, by focusing and shifting our focus from fear to faith, from lack to love and abundance and service and making a difference. Now, let me contrast a few things. So often we can focus on taking, right? I wanna get more leads, I wanna get more clients, I wanna get more referrals, and all that is a taking energy. Do you have some referrals to send me? So you're basically showing up as a mortgage parasite, taking leads, taking referrals, taking business. But what are you giving that's unique, that's a value that allows you to reciprocate in a way that allows you to feel like you have your dignity intact and you're irreplaceable and indispensable? What are you giving that makes you so indispensable and irreplaceable that they put you on their speed dial, they make you their exclusive, they send you all their business all the time, they wouldn't even think about replacing you with anyone else because everyone else pales in comparison. What are you giving that's unique, that's compelling, that's valuable, that's more than just great rates and great service? If you don't have a compelling answer to that, there's your problem. That's why you feel call reluctance that's why you feel fear of rejection because you're coming to take instead of to give. You're coming to be a lone leech until, instead of being a conduit of contribution that serves your fellow man in a meaningful way that helps them step into more prosperity and more power and more peace of mind. So again, it's a shift of consciousness. It's a shift of priority where you shift from taking to giving. You want to give versus take and come from that posture, come from that place. For example, if you have a pre-approved buyer that you can bring to a top producing agent and you can serve it to them from a silver spoon, from a silver platter, how does that energy feel versus do you have any buyers who might need help with their mortgage? Notice the difference. When you have a pre-approved buyer and you want to give that pre-approved buyer the best buying experience possible, the best leadership possible, someone who can take them by the hand and lead them to the promised land of a outstanding outcome without the glitches and hitches that 
typically come from the landmines, the plethora of landmines that you can step on in the process to navigate around all those landmines and to get an outstanding outcome without the overwhelm, without the trouble and struggle of doing it the hard way. That's a beautiful thing, is it not? And you love your client enough that you're gonna only partner, have them partner with the best buyer's agent out there. So now you're doing it not to take, but to give to give your client the best, best experience and to give the partners that you send those pre-approved buyers, buyers to a pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, hot for what you got, pre-approved buyer who's ready to buy now, not someday. It's a perfect win, 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 is it not? So that's the shift in energy from taking to giving. And you can do that a multitude of different ways if you know how, and that's why mortgage professionals come to us for help, because they don't know the how. They know that they want the outcome. They know that they want to have a breakthrough in their business. They know they don't wanna be going through the hell of cold calling and having themselves being their own bottleneck and getting their own way. And that's why they seek our help, because they're sick and tired of doing it their own way, the hard way, doing the same old thing, getting the same old result. But just know that giving versus taking is the difference maker. It's the difference that makes the difference. Let's talk about another contrast. How about serving versus selling? See, if you are just picking up the phone to sell your clients on why they need to do a refi or why they need to send you a referral or why they need to do a purchase or whatever it is that your prerogative is, and you come just from a place of, selling so you can get a commission, so you can put more dollars in your wallet, how is that energy gonna come across? It's called commission breath, right? It's called commission breath halitosis. Because energetically, you're not concerned about identifying the client's problem, and you're not concerned about really listening with a caring heart, with a compassionate heart, with an empathetic heart, you're focusing on what you can get out of the transaction because you've got bills to pay, because you've got money to make, and you've got wealth to stack, right? It's all about you. Notice the energy in that versus coming to serve, coming to be their champion, coming to be their advocate, coming to influence them out of their pain of the problem into their dream and into the solution. Notice the difference in that energy, the difference between being an advocate versus being a salesperson. And the same thing goes with real estate agents. If you come just to try and twist their rubber arms so that they can start sending you loans, and if you just try and sell them on why you're so great and why you're so good and why you're the best thing since sliced bread and why they should be sending you business versus all and every other option out there, notice the energy in that versus coming knowing that you're the bomb freaking diggity and you've got a kick-ass value proposition no one's bringing, and you're blessing the socks off of a few select mortgage professionals who qualify to be part of your VIP partnership program that is handpicked by you as a dream team of rock star real estate agents who get blessed with the privilege and the opportunity to work with you, to have you bring value no one else brings to help them grow their business, to help them get more leads, convert more of those leads into closings, help them automate and systematize and to bring a winner's mindset to everything you do because the raising tide raises, the rising tide raises all the boats. And these real estate professionals are winners. They're all tens. Why? Because you're a 10. They're all eagles. Why? Because you're an eagle. And you no longer listen to that voice in your head that you're a chicken. You say, screw freaking that. God didn't make any junk. He didn't start with me. I was born to soar. I was born to be an eagle and soar. I was born to win. I was designed for greatness. By greatness, for greatness. And you step into that identity. And now you come not to sell, but to serve. Not to ram some you know, prerogative die on someone's throat, but to identify their pain, to diagnose their pain. And then if and only if you can help, that's when you prescribe a solution 
for what ails them, a prescription for what ails them. Notice the difference energetically in that. Serving versus selling. I don't want you to be masters of sales. I want you to become masters of influence. I want you to be servants who serve with a compassionate, caring heart to make a difference in someone else's life. Coming from a place of heart connection to purpose. Coming from a place of mission to be mission-minded, to make a difference in the world, to serve your fellow man, to liberate them out of their pain and into their dream. That's where I want you to be rooted from. You come from that place, you're gonna be unfreaking stoppable because that comes from an infinite place. That comes from an unstoppable source. The source of love is infinite. If you come from your own prerogative, that's finite. That's your own ego. That's your own pride. That's your own prerogative. When you come from a heart connection to serve your fellow man, now you're tapping into the infinite. And so energetically, we've got to get you on point, rooted from the right place with the right motive. Motive matters, my friends. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is... I want you to qualify versus being qualified. Notice the difference. If you are qualifying someone else to see if they're gonna be part of your dream team versus being qualified, being enough to get a yes from someone else, being enough to have them work with you, being enough to have them wanna meet with you, being enough to have them wanna do business with you. Notice the difference there. Notice that qualifying someone presupposes you're already enough. You're more than enough. Those of you who have parents, it would be ludicrous to ask you, is your kid enough? Because it's just a ridiculous question. Of course they're enough. They're a child of God. They're you know, beautifully made. They're fearfully made in their mother's womb for a special plan and a special purpose. They're beautiful as they are. There's nothing they can do or not do to be enough. Same goes for you, but we forget about that, don't we? We see it in our kids, but we forget about it in ourselves. We're gonna remind ourselves we are enough. We're more than enough. We're designed for greatness. We're designed to win. God didn't make any junk and he didn't start with us. So we own that identity and that's now a presupposition. We presuppose it. It's a non-issue now. It's not something we debate about. It's not something we struggle with. We step into that identity. We own it. It's who we are. And now it's no longer of am I enough or not. Now it's I'm here to serve my help, my fellow man. I'm here to build a dream team of rock stars. I'm here to only work with those I want to work with, those who I jive with. As Steve Sims would say in Blue Fishing or Blue Fisher, it's an awesome book, by the way. Highly recommend it. Blue fishing. He says, you want to work with people who pass the chug test. People that you would chug a bevy with at the end of the day. People you would invite to your birthday. People that you'd invite to your wedding. People that you'd invite to your kid's wedding. I mean, it's that kind of synergy and collaboration and harmony and that chemistry that makes you just jive. You just feel great. They're cool cats that you love and they love you and there's appreciation, there's respect, there's honor. And there's just that mutual love. Now, that's your dream. That's what you're focusing on. That's what you're committed to building, a dream team of rock stars like that, that you totally jive with. Now you're not coming to the conversations hoping to qualify. You're saying, that's my dream. I'm thanking God and the universe in advance for this. I'm thanking my own sense of diligence and persistence in advance. I'm grateful in advance. Just like when you order something from Amazon, it hasn't arrived yet, but you're already excited. You're already jacked and juiced about it. You've got this anticipation about it and you know it's yours and you know it's on its way. It's already yours and you're excited about it. And you're giving thanks for it in advance before it even arrives, right? It's got your name on it. So you own it from that place, knowing it's already yours, giving thanks for it in advance, reveling in it in advance. And now it's who is aligned with that tuning fork of 
total victory. When you whack a tuning fork, it's got this beautiful sound. It resonates, right? And that sound allows a artist, a musical artist, to attune their instruments to that sound. It's like the true north for the navigators of the sea of the olden days. They would use that north star to navigate that shining light. They only needed one star in the night sky, the north star to navigate. They knew that was north. They could navigate just based on that one beacon of light. So now that you have this in your heart, this dream of having a dream team of rock stars and you're giving thanks for it in advance, it's like that true north. It's that north star shining in your heart. It's like that tuning fork for a musician. They know what it needs to sound like so they can attune all the other elements of their instrument. So now they're playing beautifully, attuned to the right sound. That dream that you're meditating on and marinating your heart and mind on is that tuning fork, is that true north. And now you're qualifying these potential partners to see if they align with that tuning fork, with that resonance, to see if they align with that true north, that beacon of light that has you know in your gut whether or not they're right or not, whether or not they're aligned or not, whether or not they're attuned or not, whether or not they're the right fit or not. So instead of them qualifying you based on their dream and their measures of qualification, you're qualifying them. Screw freaking that. You're qualifying them based on your true north, based on your dream, based on what you want to create in your life and your business. And here's the truth. You can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. Let that sink in. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. You can have it exactly the way you want it if you don't settle. So you have to know what you want. You got to know why you want it and you got to give thanks for it in advance. You got to resonate on that frequency. You got to attune yourself to that vibration, that frequency of victory. And then you have circumstance align with it. You don't align with circumstance. You have circumstance align with your dream and you don't settle, period. That's the problem not nowadays is people live in fear. And so instead of Firing, blessing, and releasing a problem child client or a problem child realtor, they put up with it because they have fear of lack and scarcity. True? And I've been there too, putting up with bullshit because I feel like if I let them go, all of a sudden now I'm going to have a reduction in income and I got bills to pay and I got dragons to slay to feed my family. And so you focus on the lack, limitation, and scarcity and fear versus knowing that you can have it exactly the way you want it. If you don't settle, if you live by faith and trust that if you will bless and release the wrong clients, the wrong partners, you will have space energetically to create an opening to attract the right partners, the right clients. And have you noticed anytime you bless and release someone from your energetic space by virtue of the fact that you realize, you know what, it's not worth the trouble and struggle and the headaches and the drama and trauma. And if you've ever released someone from your life, whether it be a, you know, partner, a lover, uh, whether it be a client or a agent that just wasn't working out and you bless them and release them, what happened? Every single time you attract someone better. It happens all the time. Sometimes it happens the same day, the same hour. You bless and release someone, and next thing you know, this dream client, this dream partner steps in your midst. There are no accidents. It's because you had the faith and the clarity and the certainty to declare what you wanted and say, I will have it the way I want it, and I will not settle. And anyone who doesn't align with that true north, with that beacon of light, anyone who doesn't align with that tuning fork, that resonation of victory, I will bless them and release them to work with someone else, to do life on a journey with someone else because we're just not energetically aligned. We don't cuss their name. We don't add additional suffering and drama by creating strife with them. We just bless them and release them. Does that make sense, guys? So we want to qualify versus be being qualified. 
you're in the driver's seat. You've got the cookie. You decide whether or not they have the privilege and pleasure of working with you, not out of a sense of arrogance, but knowing you're the bomb freaking diggity because you know that you know that you know that you bring more value than anyone else. You serve at a higher level than anyone else. You bring excellence to the table like no one else, not because you're arrogant, but because you're confident because you've got the scars to prove it, the muscle to prove it because you've been pressing into the strain and pressing through the pain to get the gain while everyone else is making excuses, stacking toilet paper and Campbell's soup and you know waiting for the storm to roll over. You're building muscle and you're expanding and you're growing. That's how come you know that you know that you know that you're the bomb freaking diggity. Does that make sense, guys? So in the same vein of thought, you want to interview versus being interviewed. They're not in interviewing you. You're interviewing them. They need you more than you need them. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Marinate your mind on that for a moment. Notice how that feels. They need you more than you need them, not just because you think it, but because they believe it when they see the awesomeness that you bring to the table. If you even make them an offer, you only make them an offer to join your dream team, your VIP partnership program. If you know you can help them, if you want to help them, and if you're compelled to help them, it's not a have to, it's a get to, it's all by choice. It's a privilege to even get an offer from you because you disqualify 20, 30, 40% of the people you talk to. Notice energetically the shift in your posture with that kind of approach, with that kind of belief system. So they're not interviewing you, you're interviewing them. Notice what happens to fear of rejection. What happens to call reluctance when you own that power, when you stand in that place, when you stand in that identity? And here's another one just to cap it off. You are letting them in. You're not being let in. You're not hoping, wishing, and praying that they might throw you a bone, that they might think kindly enough about you to maybe give you a shot and send you a deal. You're not hoping and wishing and praying that maybe, maybe if they're goodwilled enough, if you can align the lucky stars and thread enough uh, needles that maybe you'll be privileged and blessed enough to have the incredible, exceeding joy of working with them. Screw freaking that. It's the other way around. They're blessed to work with you because you bring value no one else brings with a heart to serve and humility. You bring excellence for excellence sake. You don't just take deals, you give deals. You don't just show up and be a lone leech, screw freaking that. You're light years ahead of that. You help them get more leads at their open houses, convert more of those leads into closed deals, help them dominate on Google with five-star reviews, help them get more listings, help them grow their business, get more repeat and referral business, resurrect dead leads into hot for what you got leads, automate their marketing. You spoon feed them from a silver platter hot for what you got pre-approved buyers because you don't just rely on your clients and your database and your realtors. You have a multitude of different ways that you bring in business such that you're bringing pre-approved buyers who need a buyer's agent, not taking those pre-approved buyers, not generating those by virtue of the referral coming your way. You're referring it the other way. It's called reciprocity and you're bringing it in a beautiful and abundant way with a heart to serve. So you're not being let in. No, you're letting them into your world. Welcome to Planet Prosper. That's how you roll. Notice the shift energetically. Notice there's no place for call reluctance. There's no place for fear. There's no place for fear of rejection. It's like, it's like a toddler kicking your knees, kicking your shins. It's like, that's laughable. That's so far from your world. It's laughable, right? It's funny. It's cute. Fear of rejection is cute now because it's just so far from your consciousness. It's not even close to who you are. It flies in the face of your identity. So lastly, I just want to bring something to your attention that I think a lot of mortgage professionals lose sight of. When it comes to clients, when it comes to realtors, from a standpoint of having the best life, and having a business that sets you free as opposed to enslaves you, less is more. Wouldn't you agree it's better to have less realtors but have better quality ones, better producing ones, ones that 
pass the chunk test. They're cool cats. They're fun to work with. They're super appreciative. They're super respectful. They love and adore you. They endorse you to the hilt to all their clients. They tell their clients, hey, are you, they don't, they don't ask, are you approved? They say, you need to get approved. You need to get pre-approved through my pre, uh, my uh, endorsed, my trusted mortgage professional. They don't ask if they're pre-approved. They say, you need to get pre-approved through my trusted mortgage professional. And so they're endorsing you to the help. They're singing your name from the rooftops, praising your name. So they're using that power of third-party endorsement. And they're doing 20, 30, 40, 50 plus transactions a year. And if you do the math on that, you don't need many of those partners. If, especially if you're getting one or two loans, two, one to three loans a month from each one of those partners, those VIP partners, you do the math on that. If you're making 3K a pop per deal, you don't need many of those to change your life, do you? We're talking five to 10 solid partners and you're done. Meanwhile, so-called experts and coaches out there are telling you to cold call the same 40 freaking realtors every Monday, going for the masses, trying to go after so many people. Why would you want to go after so many people? You know what that is? It's called freaking hell. It's called having 40 plus bosses, Tony around by the nose. Is that really the life you want to live? I don't think so. You want a simple, elegant life of freedom, of joy, of fun, of fulfillment, you want freedom. You don't want a glorified job trading time for money, having 40 plus people towing you around by the nose every day, bossing you around, treating you like they're, you know, you're like their freaking bitch. I don't think so. You want to have respect, love, appreciation, synergy, and you want cool cats that you just adore to work with. And you want to go narrow, deep, and rich with just a few cool cats that love you and send you all their business than going wide and shallow and skimpy with a bunch of drama queen chumps that don't respect you, that treat you like their bitch and that treat you like a replaceable commodity. Notice the difference energetically. Less is more. So consider simplifying your life and your business and make your goal instead of having 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 plus realtors, make your goal to have 10 top producing rock, star, rock stars that love you and you love them and they send you all their business all the time, they make you their exclusive. Notice how that feels energetically. Doesn't that feel great just to have five to 10 rock stars and they send you all their business? That's what I'm talking about. More is not more, less is more. So if you've been picking up what I'm putting down, if you've been digging what I've been sharing, if you feel like this is exactly the message you needed to hear, it was the shot in the arm and the kick in the ass you needed to really get yourself back on track so you can move past that fear and that call reluctance and step into your power. And at the same time, you're realizing, I need more clarity, Dorn, on how I'm going to bring that unique value. I need more clarity on how I can get out of my own way, out of the paralysis by analysis, out of my stinking thinking and get into actually executing what you're talking about because I love the concept. I love how it feels imagining myself being that person who has that team of you know that dream team of rock stars that are sending me all their business all the time and there's that synergy and that reciprocity that just feels fantastic. I love the dream, I love the idea. The execution though is where I'm stumped. How do I execute? What are the tools? What are the systems? What are the campaigns? What are the words that work? How do I book these appointments with these top producing agents? What do I say? How do I say it? How do I overcome all these objections they give me? Like I'm already married to my lender. I'm already working with someone. I'm good. Call me later. All the smokescreen BS they give you to shake you off because they think you're just another one of those lone parasites. So that's a knee jerk reaction. How do I get past all those knee jerk reactions in that high wall of cynicism and resignation? That's a very good question. That's precisely why people reach out to us for help. We've been in this game coaching mortgage pros for 15 years. This is not our first rodeo. So if you'd like more clarity and more assistance on how you can take these concepts and these ideas and make them real in your life and your business, so you can double, triple, quadruple your income without increasing your workload, working less while er earning more, I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call where we would lift up the hunt on your business. We would either 
you would get with me or one of my consultants and we would look at where you're at now in your business. What's going on now in your business? Where do you want to be in your business? What's working? What's not working? What do you want to create? What kind of vision do you want to manifest? And if it looks like we can help you, by all means, I will show you how. If not, I'll be the first person to advise you to pass on our services, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. Either way, though, my goal for you is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity. We'll have a real honest conversation. Chances are we'll have some fun along the way. So if that sounds meaningful and worthwhile to you, and you're a 100% commission mortgage professional, and you have an 80 basis points or higher comp plan, and you wanna increase your income by at least $100,000 or more in the next 12 months, I invite you to take advantage of that breakthrough call. It's 100% complimentary. All you do is book the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Don't book the call if you're already happy with the way your business is right now. Don't book the call if you're not aggravated with something in your business that has been festering and you can't seem to figure it out on your own. Don't book the call if you're cool either way. If you're cool where you're at and you're cool if you stay where you're at and you, you're cool if you just keep being where you're at, doing what you're doing and getting what you're getting, don't book the call. The clients we work with are clients who are sick and freaking tired of being in the same spot, doing the same thing, getting the same old result. They're sick and tired of the slow grind. They're sick and tired of worrying where their next deal is going to come from. They're sick and tired of knowing there's greatness in them and yet they're not tapping it and feeling that gap of knowing they're capable of spreading their wings and soaring and yet they're still scratching around in the chicken yard with the chickens. Nothing wrong with chickens, but when you're called to be an eagle, when you know you got eagle wings, it sucks being in the chicken yard with the chickens because you know you're called to something more and something higher and something glorious. So if that is you, where you're sick and tired of just grinding, doing it the hard way, worrying where your next deal is gonna come from, making micro improvements instead of supercharging your success, and you just wanna get straight to what works without messing around doing it the hard way, book a call. Best thing you'll ever do. It'll give you clarity like you've never had clarity before. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So thank you for hanging with me, guys. It's been a blessing to serve you today. My name is Doran Aldana. This is the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast powered by MortgageMarketingCoach.com at MortgageMarketingCoach.com. I trust you got some insight. I trust that you activated some dendrites today. You connected some dots today. You got some new distinctions today. Now it's not enough just to learn this. It's not enough to just know this because the biggest gap in life is the gap between that which we know and that which we do. So don't just get information for the sake of information. Get information so you can step into transformation. And that's precisely why you want to book a breakthrough call. If you meet the criteria I mentioned earlier, do it mortgagemarketcoach.com forward slash apply. Thanks for hanging with me and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.